All right, today I'm going to talk to you about my practice routine on the drum set and especially how I manage to practice, do all my practicing in 30 minutes a day. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say how much you practice a day really depends on your goals. It's different for everybody. You know, there have been times in my life where I practiced hours and hours a day. Um, <clears throat> when I was in the military band, especially, I was being paid for it. It made a lot of sense. That was my total focus. These days I do lots of different things. I play the guitar, I sing, I play the piano, I write songs, I record, I do all my own mixing. And so I'm trying to juggle all these different things. So what your practice routine consists of really depends on what your goals are. I have two very broad goals when it comes to practicing. First goal is simply to stay in shape. So when it's time for a gig, I have the chops to play what I want to play. The second thing is to always be improving. I always want to be always improving as a drummer. And so those are pretty broad goals, actually. First of all, if you simply want to stay in shape, I could just sit down and play the drum set every day, you know, for 30 minutes, an hour, and that would keep me in shape. Um, I had a friend of mine years ago I think that was really only his goal, and that's what he would do, and that works for that purpose. But if you ha if you want to actually improve, then you have to think about what you want to what you actually want to improve. So anyway, this 30-minute um, practice session, what I do on the drums, I've reversed things. I used to practice. I used to warm up on a practice pad first to get my hands warmed up, and over the years, I found out that was a poor use of time, in my opinion. I like to start at the drum set because I'm trying to warm up my feet and my hands all at the same time. So I start with usually a two-handed 16th pattern. This is mostly what I do, just kind of as a warm-up. Um, it's a two-handed 16th funk pattern. This warms up my single strokes, my double strokes. It also warms up my bass drum, you know, my foot. Um, <clears throat> I play a lot of a lot of notes on the bass drum during this exercise because I'm trying to really get it warmed up, give it a good workout. And playing this particular pattern allows me to put a lot of notes in there. So I'll start the metronome at a quarter note equals 60. I'll play for a little while. I'll improvise usually is what I do. And then um, as I'm doing this, another thing I want to mention is I play both matched grip and traditional grip. And I had a discussion a while back with someone I was telling them I think it's a myth to tell people. I mean, I used to think if you didn't spend twice as much time with the sticks, you couldn't play both those grips. And I found that that just isn't true. Once you know how to play both grips, if you just keep using them all the time, you'll have the chops you need with that grip. It's nice to be able to play with both grips. So as I'm, as I'm practicing, I'm always switching back and forth. So anyway, I'm going to give you a little demonstration of this two-handed 16th pattern. Again, this works my single strokes, works my bass drum, also works on my double strokes. Um, today I'm going to be using, another thing I should mention, I'm using these, um, i trying to remember what the name of, them, name of these are. They're like a brush stick. I'll put some notes in the video so you can look some of these things up. Uh, these are endorsed, I believe, by Steve Smith. Uh, normally what I do, though, I use... I always start with these Dave Weckl model sticks because they're a little bit heavier and I find that that's a good way to warm up, especially for rock and funk. I like these sticks. I also like them for rudiments, you know, for working on stuff on the practice pad. I have the smaller SD combo sticks I use for playing with my jazz combo when we're playing straight ahead stuff, but I just find, out, find that I don't warm up as much using those and so I usually don't start with those. And we'll talk about that as we go. But the reason I'm starting with these, the reason I'm using these today is I have limited time to make these videos. I'm trying to put out one per week. And unless I do a lot of editing with the sound, lots of mics, the sound is its going to sound really bad. You're not going to be able to really understand what I'm doing or, or, light, or appreciate the video. So anyway, I'm using these. It brings the volume down a little bit. You'll still get the idea. But normally, again, I warm up with those Dave Weckl sticks. So anyway show you here. So here's a quarter note equals 60. Hopefully you can hear that. So here's my pattern. Switch to traditional grip. 
So I'll start with that, and then again, I just keep moving the metronome up. Maybe the next setting is quarter note equals 70. Same thing. I should mention here I still practice out of books but I'm less inclined to do that than I used to you know it's almost like when I was younger I thought the goal was to master every book or every pattern in every book and I finally figured out after playing the drums for years you know nobody really cares how many books you can play but what they do care about is when it's time to play a groove that you can play a groove or when it's time to take a solo you be able, you better be able to come up with something right now that works and so if you never practice improvising, if you're always playing, you know, out of a book, something that's already written, you're going to have a hard time doing that. So I always spend a lot of my practice time improvising, is what I'm saying. I'm always trying to expand my vocabulary rather than just always working on my technique. So anyway, the first part of this practice session, again, I usually warm up with something like that. And then I vary it a lot. One of the questions that I have gotten a lot over the years, I think, is people ask, well, do you ever get bored practicing? You know, I've been doing this forever. And the answer is not really. Number one, I love the drum set. This is still my favorite instrument out of, out of everything I've done, uh, which is why I'm still playing it. But I'm also, I'm always trying to practice different things. So I do that as a short warm-up, and then still with those Dave Weckl sticks, I'm moving into something else. Sometimes I'll practice sambas at that point, something out of the Ted Reed syncopation book along with that. Sometimes at that point, I'll, I'll just switch drumsticks, okay? I use those to warm up, and then I'm into my other drumsticks, which again is these combo drumsticks. Then I can go different directions. Like, uh, for instance, one week I was playing with a group, and we were playing, the band leader said, let's play Take Five by the Dave Brubeck Quartet, only he said, let's take it in seven. <laughs> no rehearsal. And that's the kind of thing that happens in jazz. It's very challenging. If you're not used to playing in seven, I, I'm capable of playing in seven, but I haven't done a lot of that. So I did okay, but for the next week, the next part of my practice session was spent practicing soloing in seven, you know, writing some patterns out, working on some independence, really working on that. The other thing I want to mention about practicing while I'm on that subject, whatever you decide to practice, to me, you should stick with it for a while. You know, maybe it's for a week. But you don't really want to, you know, practice 10 minutes out of this book and then the next week, you know, the next day, 10 minutes out of another book and then you never come back to anything. Really nothing gets any better that way. You're better off picking something that you want to work on and just working on it. And then you can work on that for a week, two weeks, whatever. Maybe you're bored of it. Maybe it's not getting any better. And then you move on to something else. You can always come back to it. I do have some books I work out of. Again, I, what I was mentioning earlier, I do a lot of improvising. Um, one of the things I've been working on the last few weeks, I guess, is more up-tempo playing again. We've been playing songs in my jazz combo like uh, Cherokee, Meet the Flintstones, really fast tempos. And so when it's time to take a solo like that, you know, you need to be able to keep up and you need to come up with something fast. So, you know, the tempos are like this. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting the metronome on, gradually speeding that up taking four measure solos, eight measure solos, maybe sometimes I'll, I'll play the whole form in my head, I'm, I'm singing the song, but I'm practicing being able to play at those fast tempos. That's another example. And then, again, moving on, I have a number of different books here. Um, I'll put some of these in the, in the uh, video notes, but this is Afro-Cuban Grooves for Bass and Drums. These are very advanced books, by the way. I wouldn't recommend these for beginners. I've always been a big fan of Latin drumming, and I always felt like, I still feel like I have more to learn. So this is a book by Lincoln Goins and Robbie Amin. And so sometimes I'll practice out of that. John Riley did a couple of great books. Uh, he's a teacher at Manhattan School of Music, The Art of Bebop Drumming, Beyond Bop Drumming. That's another one. This one was recommended by, a, I'm trying to remember where I first heard of this, but this was written by a former student of Alan Dawson. And there's all kinds of ways of practicing Ted Reed's syncopation in this book. Uh, sometimes I'll play that. This book, I don't know if this is in print anymore, but one of the things I like to work on 
As I mentioned earlier, I don't like to spend all my time practicing technical exercises because I think it's so important to continue to expand your vocabulary on the instrument. You know, when you look at great drummers, look at someone like Bill Stewart, great jazz drummer, one of the best drummers, modern jazz drummers, I would say. When I watch Bill play or listen to him play, it's not so much that I'm, you know, amazed by his technique. He is an amazing technician, but what I am amazed by is his ideas. He's got a, a really great ideas. Those ideas don't just come out of thin air. You work on those ideas. You develop them. Part of the way you develop them and develop them and continue to develop your vocabulary is continuing to study other drummers. So this book is called Different Drummers. It's by Billy Mintz. And I got this many, many years ago. This has solos by people like um, Art Blakey, uh, Max Roach, Tony Williams. So sometimes I practice solos out of this book or other solos I find on the internet. You know, over the years I've done a lot of transcribing as well. So that's this kind of this portion of the practice session. And again, that can go different directions, but I do try to stay on one thing usually for about a week at a time, maybe a couple weeks at a time, and then maybe I move on to something else. So I spend all this time at the drum set. After I'm done at the drum set, you know, for 20 minutes, maybe close to 25 minutes, then I move, move over to the practice pad and finish, finish up with some various stick exercises, which I'll show you a few of those now on the practice pad. Um, I found that practicing on the practice pad is still important for me. I just don't do a lot of it anymore. I used to do it all, all the time, constantly. Um, I was very obsessed with Buddy Rich when I was younger, so I wanted to play as fast as possible, <laughs> plain and simple. So I was always working on my chops. Again, at this point, I'm still improving my speed, uh, but part of what I'm doing is just trying to stay in shape. What I practice, I usually start, again, quarter note equals 60, with some uh, full strokes. Full strokes just for a few minutes usually, that loosens up my wrists. Again, doing it traditional grip. Literally, that's just a few minutes usually. You know, if I'm not very warmed up, I'll start softer, but again, after being on the drum set for a while, I'm usually pretty warmed up. Then I usually move into some double strokes, different subdivisions of, su of double strokes. This is about a quarter note equals 80, I think. Eighth notes, you know. Kind of a medium dynamic, but you can do different dynamic levels. Triplets. Sometimes I'll move that up, you know, different tempos. Then I usually get into some accents, um, depend, you know, around the same tempo, maybe quarter note equals 70. I'm doing eighth notes is what I'm doing. Finger accents, I've got a whole video about this, by the way. This is an unusual technique. So this is actually eighth note equals, I think, 70. It's not about speed, it's about getting those fingers working. I don't normally play my accents like this, by the way. This is just an exercise uh, to get those fingers working. If you're a drummer and you're interested in this in stick technique, I would watch all the drum videos I have up on YouTube about stick technique. My background, by the way, I studied with a student of Joe Morello. That's where I learned most of what I learned, except for this technique, I actually learned from a different teacher. But anyway, so again, a few minutes of those is all. Then I get into some single strokes. When I say a few minutes, maybe it's only a couple minutes. I don't know, it's not very many. Because a lot of times this whole routine takes me about five minutes or a little, maybe just a little longer.
I should mention too, I usually work on the French grip just because I use it a lot on the ride symbol. I usually find that working on the French grip helps my, you know, my German grip, my match grip. So they're, they're kind of interchangeable. I mean, they, they do help each other. They have different purposes, but the last thing usually is my arm accents. I might start it at 80 or so and then gradually work it up a little, just a little faster. I guess this is 90, quarter note equals 90. When that gets going, we go quite a bit faster. So anyway, that's pretty much the whole routine. You know, if I have a little extra time, sometimes I work on my buzz rolls a little bit. Um, but I pretty much narrowed all my technique, stick technique down in just to just a few things. There's lots of different rudiments, but when you think about it, it's all single strokes and double strokes primarily. You know, you could look at an arm, an arm accent as a, a separate technique that you have to continually stay on top of or you won't have, you know, good control of it. Uh, buzz rolls is also another, you know, another, um, uses another muscle. So sometimes I'll use, I'll work on those as well. But I personally have found that I don't need to work on those as much to keep them in shape. They're just easier to do. That's pretty much my whole routine. And like I said, this is kind of a long video today, but I do this whole routine usually in about 30 minutes. Sometimes if I have a little extra time, I'll go a little over that. that that's the bare minimum for what I have found I need to reach my goals, which is stay in shape and continue to improve as a drummer.